Hello everyone, my name is Alexis Esquivel. Um, I hope everybody had a good day today. I'm doing my presentation on What Leaders Really Do by John P. Cotter. Okay, so first off, I know we were supposed to say something interesting about ourselves. Um, I had a lot of trouble with that. I think that I told you all everything in my last presentation. Um, I don't find myself to be a very interesting person. Um, so I'm going to kind of go back to what I said last time. I think that the most interesting part about myself is my four-year-old son, Ethan. Um, he's an amazing little boy. He has overcome so much and... He just brightens up my day. Although now he is starting to act like he's an adult and he can do whatever he wants. So I think I'm going to have a little bit of trouble with him coming up soon. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to tell you all a little bit about the author. His name is John P. Cotter. Um, he was born on February 25th. 1947 and is 70 years old. Um, his education background is from Harvard Business School um, and Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He has worked as a professor, scholar, consultant for management, and an author. Okay, now on to the article on what leaders really do. Um, leadership complements management. It does not replace it. Neither is better than the other. Um, leadership and management are two distinctive and com complementary systems of action. Each has its own function and characteristic activities. Um, both are necessary to run a good business environment. Um, I found this picture over here um good leaders um do right things and managers do things right which results in effectiveness um, leaders promote idea generation while leaders provide structure that results in employee innovation leaders inspire as managers coordinate resulting in teamwork Leaders pursue and create opportunities while managers react to situations regarding and resulting in accomplishment. Um, leaders create vision while managers provide resources resulting in empowerment. The roles of managers are to plan and budget, organize and staff, control and problem solve. While the leader's role is to set a direction, align people, and motivate people. How to get successful leaders. Um, first, a way for them to come along, actively pursue individuals with leadership qualities, expose them to career experiences and direct individuals to departments that expose more of their leadership. Creating a culture for leadership by promoting employees that have great leadership potential, exposing younger employees to failures and successes of leadership assigning challenging tasks to certain individuals, um, strong professional relationships in the workplace, and creating challenging opportunities for young employees. By definition, it pushes responsibility lower in an organization and in the process creates more challenging jobs at lower levels. Such practices almost by themselves prepare people for small and medium-sized leadership jobs.
There's nothing magic about this process. Companies look at their current young employees in management, then discuss their potential in becoming a great leader. They also discuss a development procedure. Uh, oftentimes, it is more informal. Well-led businesses tend to organize and reward people who successfully develop leaders. This is rarely done as part of a formal compensation uh, formula simply because it is too difficult to measure um, achievements and precision. Okay, so this is my favorite quote by John Cotter on leadership. It's institutionalizing a leadership-centered culture is the ultimate act of leadership. Um, I think that he's correct in saying that the best leaders are the ones that show others how to lead. Um, I think that's the best thing a company can have. So that's the end of my presentation. Um, I hope you all have a good night and um, enjoy the rest of the semester. Thank you.